outside the box reviews, Predator Week begins. And today we're taking a look at the NECA Predator Wave 16 Kenner Tribute Ghost Predator. Now, from what I've seen, this isn't exactly a one-to-one -one correlation between an old vintage Kenner Predator figure. I guess there wasn't actually one called Ghost in that vintage line, but there was something that kind of looked similar to this guy. But you know what? I really don't give a crap about that. What I'm super excited about with this figure is that we're getting our first in-hand look at the ultimate Predator body. As you may know, NECA is going back to the City Hunter and the Jungle Hunter and remaking those figures with with new articulation, basically all the cool stuff we got with the AVP body mold and putting it back to those classic Predators we got years ago and including all those accessories. I thought those were gonna be the debut of those bodies, but we get this one with added articulation and some new sculpted bits and details. So there's some new on this figure. There's also some old, so let's go ahead and take a closer look. This figure comes with some pretty basic accessories, ones we've come to expect. So we get the smart disc here, same mold we've been getting forever but nicely done. I love the kind of dirty silver paint job they gave this thing. His right hand is molded to hold the smart disc. And I don't know if this is something new for this version of the Predator, the ultimate body, or if it's just luck. But I never had any luck with these little holsters here on the side before and I find that I'm actually able to get the smart disc to sit in that holster pretty well. It's not really going to fall out. It seems fairly solid which is awesome. We also get the Predator 2 style combi spear with the kind of tiered layers to it getting really tiny here at the end. They're getting bigger with each individual bit. It's not retractable or anything like that. We do get some kind of leathery looking grips here in the middle. A lot of silver detail. That same kind of dirty silver look is throughout the entire figure on all of his armor. Mine is a little bent and I think it's this middle section. I think I've seen this before. Like the middle part here is a softer rubber material and everything else is hard plastic so it kind of tends to bend around the center point. And then last but not least in the same color pattern as everything else we get his sword knife machete whatever you want to call it this is reused from what i believe was called the lost predator the one that was known in movie lore as borg it's the exact same sword we got with that member of the lost tribe but it looks good with this predator it works for his design i think a big thing with all the predators in this wave is they all have removable masks it's something that's harder to do when you're being movie accurate, but I like that NECA's taking advantage of the Kenner line to really bring in more of those when they can. The mask itself is really cool. It's actually a little dirtier than the rest of his armor. It has a very heavy rust color to it on top of that silver. The eyes are actually a nice shiny silver in there, looking pretty threatening. And there's some kind of mechanical stuff here at the bottom, reminiscent of the Celtic Predator, I think. But a very, very cool looking bio mask. You even have his laser sight up there at the top. And this is, of course, removable and on the inside of it we get some really cool detail i love that neca includes detail on the inside even though you're rarely ever going to take a look at it but that's really cool looking and the face itself is pretty basic for a predator it's the very standard jungle hunter kind of look we do get some short dreads on it to give it a little bit of variance with the pieces in the hair being similar to the rest of his armor i do like the paint scheme on here they gave him these kind of orangey eyes that are pretty threatening looking we have the mostly closed mouth on him detail painted in there looks pretty good the gums are nice and pink the teeth have a good bone color to them which kind of contrasts to the skin but not really the skin has a really cool pearlescent sheen to it which i don't know if it'll show up very well on camera but in person it looks really neat it gives it this very ghostly image there's a lot of black paint marks around his head but there's a little bit of that orange from his eyes as well kind of just highlighting the black going just around the outside of it which really helps accent all the details on this figure i really like it a lot we have the standard Jungle Hunter shoulder cannon, which is a little floppy on mine, but you can hinge it there at the bottom, and then you have a ball joint there at the top where you can aim it around. Standard backpack that we've gotten many times before, and of course that is removable. You can unpeg it from the front here, and then it pegs lower down on the back. Nothing super exciting here on the back. I think all of this stuff, despite it being a new body, is pretty much exactly the same as it has been for quite a long time. I don't have the old body here to compare with, but I don't think there's much different here in this backpack section in terms of detail, but still nicely accomplished. 
We get his little bone bandolier piece. We have a piece of spine here. And then what looks like claws or fingers coming up around the side, which looks pretty good. This all seems like a rubberized piece. I know in the past they've sometimes used strings or rubber. But this actually seems like just a rubber cord with all these details on it. The armor continues on the same look as I already mentioned before. That nice silvery tarnished look. Some good detail here with a little buckle on his leather straps to kind of hold the armor together. One thing I kind of have an issue with is if you look at the angle his neck neck is at it seems to be protruding forward a little more than i would expect with a jungle hunter and i'm assuming that's part of this body mold i don't think it's specific to this predator so i'm not really sure how i feel about that look in particular it seems a little strange here on the shoulder we have an armor piece i think we first got with that albino predator from dead end which i like this armor it's kind of cool looking we continue on those stripes with the orange outlining the black down the arms his right arm has the standard predator gauntlet though you do get black blades on there which are unique and those slide out just as we've come to expect with all of these releases the hand has fitting detail it has the spikes on his knuckles and the leather wrappings around it which look pretty cool but it's over on the left arm that we get some new detail. Well, the shoulder piece is all the same stuff we've seen before, but we get down to the wrist computer and in fitting with those new AVP figures, this one opens. So now we can actually have our old style predators with wrist computers. Very, very excited about that added detail. And then here on his left side, he does have more of a gripping hand as opposed to the open disc hand there on the right. As with most of these Kenner predators, the netting on this figure isn't painted in. You really just get the pattern on the flesh itself, but the netting is still molded in because they're not going to make a new mold, I guess, to do the Kenner line, which makes sense. But the detail for the skin does continue to look really good going down the rest of the figure. With the loincloth here in the back, which is nice brown with some painted in details to give it a kind of a dirty look. Even inside the holster has some detail. There's kind of coppery bits inside, making it look more mechanical. You have the very standard crotch armor there for the Predator. We have the classic P1 shin armor and then the classic P1 feet with the little sandals going on and of course peg holes at the bottom. For articulation we get a ball joint there at the base of the neck. We could also turn side to side as well as pivot there. The arms are on pin socket joints they will go forward back as well as out to the side. We have a bicep swivel. We have double jointed elbows which are freaking awesome so happy to have those in this version of the figure i would recommend being careful here on his left side because he does have that hose on his arm where it looks like neck has kind of moved it a little bit so that it's coming to the side rather than really over the elbow like i believe it was before but if it's in the wrong spot i can imagine you could overextend this piece and snap it off especially because we do also have a rotation there at the base of each gauntlet so it make it really easy to get it in just the wrong position and pop it out of course you could probably glue it right back in we do have a ball joint there at the wrist as well as a swivel a brand new ball joint here in the mid torso which is very very welcome so you can go forward back side to side as well as tilt this piece is something i am super excited about in getting the new jungle hunter and city hunter we also have a bit of a ball joint there at the waist you can also rotate. You don't get a ton of movement out of this waist joint as far as forward, back, side to side, but you get enough to complement this upper torso joint that I think you can get some great poses. Legs are pin and socket joints. It will go forward, back, as well as out to the side. Everything feels nice and tight on here. You can also swivel at the upper leg. Have a double joint there at the knee and a ball joint at the foot. And I'm ridiculously happy we can get a Jungle Hunter style figure now using a wrist computer. It seems like that's been something we've wanted for so long in this line and I'm glad it's finally here. Overall, the Ghost Predator is a solid entry in this line. Anybody who's followed my reviews for a while knows I don't get super excited about these Kenner Tribute lines, even though I'm pretty sure this is my favorite of all of them. Spoiler alert for the other two figures. But in the end, I am more personal interested in having the movie inspired predators so these are just kind of cool curiosities but never essential in my mind except for me where i feel like i'm obligated to review all of them but this figure does get a solid recommendation if you're only going to pick up one from this wave i don't know if this is going to be that one i think the other two are infinitely more interesting and are probably going to be much more unique we are pretty much going to get all the cool new stuff with this figure again with the ultimate jungle hunter so to me, this is more of a preview than it is the main feature. Still, like I said though, solidly recommendable piece. It just has me more excited for future releases. Make sure you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Also follow me on Instagram, using the Outside the Box Reviews. Check me out on Facebook, link below. And until next time, this has been our Outside the Box Reviews, and Predator Week continues next.